Hi, Families for Literacy. It's Ellen from Read Santa Clara, and I wanted to tell you about what you're going to get in the mail from us this month. In your May packet, if you have little kids, you're going to get a copy of this book, Where the Wild Things Are. If you have older kids, Priya's picked out a number of, of chapter books for each of you. And then you're going to get a bunch of pieces of paper. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what's on the pieces of paper and show you how to do some of the things that we have in the packet for you. So let's get started. You know, all of us are a little bit stressed out right now. It's hard to be home all day and not be able to do the things we're used to doing. So I wanted to show you a very simple stress relieving breath exercise that everybody in your family, from little kids to grown ups to even people as old as me, can do. It's called the flower and the candle. So what you do is pretend that in this hand you have a flower that smells really good and you're going to smell the flower. And in this hand you have a candle and you're going to blow the candle out. So you start by taking a great big deep breath through your nose from the flower. Smell the flower. And then you blow out the candle with a great big breath from your mouth. So I'm going to do it all together again. Here we go. You can do it with me. If you breathe all the way in and then all the way out about four or five times, you'll find that you'll relax and you'll feel much calmer. This month, the craft that we have for you to do is to make a monster bookmark. Let me show you what they look like. I made one and I put it in my book. You see, there's my monster bookmark. So now I'm going to show you how to follow the directions on the sheet. Over here you can see there's a little origami folding and there's directions for each step so you can follow the directions. But watch what I do. So first you take your origami, the big piece of paper, it's six by six inches, it's in your packet, and place it down with so it's shaped like a diamond and fold it like a triangle. Fold the top, the bottom point up to the top. So it looks like this. So then the next thing that you want to do is you want it, you have your fold on the bottom. You take the point on one side and you fold it up to the point at the top. And then you take the point on the other side and you fold it up to the top. So now you have a little, a smaller square that has two diamond halves, one, two triangles, one on each side. So now you open it up and you have your fold again at the bottom pointing you. Take the top point, so up at the top, because you fold it in half, you have two points. Take the top point and fold it down to the bottom so it looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tuck these two side pieces in. And when I practiced doing this at home, I found that the easiest thing to do was to turn it and fold that point in straight like this. So fold it in like this. But then you're going to open it up and refold it where you had it before and tuck that point inside like this. So now it's tucked inside. Can you see that? It's tucked inside. So let's do the other side. I got a little messed up here, but it'll be okay. So fold it in. Fold it into your point like this. Fold it open 
and then fold it where it was again before and tuck that little point in like that. So now you have your two points tucked in and if you turn it this way, that is your monster head. So now what we need to do is put in the monster's mouth. So you have, my, mine's red, but you have pink, little smaller pink pieces of paper in your packet. So take that piece of paper and use your glue stick and put glue all around the edge. Then you want to take that piece and have it turn so it's like a diamond and tuck it inside your monster and glue it down to the back so it looks like his mouth. So it looks like this. Now we're going to give him some teeth. So Priya gave you some teeth in their packet. I cut some teeth from a piece of paper. So it's very care you need to be careful with your teeth because what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue on them and then we're going to glue them in to the inside of the top part so his teeth stick out like that. So carefully put some glue just along the top edge of where your teeth are and then take them and tuck them underneath his head and push down so that the glue sticks to the top of his head. So be sure that the glue's on top so that his teeth will stick to the top of his head. Now, you have some very nice Google eyes in your packet to put on your monster. I don't have any, so I'm gonna cut a couple of circles out of this little piece of paper, and that's what I'm gonna make the eyes out of. And if you want to make another bookmark and you don't have any more Google eyes, you can do the same thing. So I just cut two little pieces of paper. They're kind of stuck together, two pieces of paper. And now I'm going to take my glue stick and stick them on, glue them on. There's one eye and there's the other eye. And then if you want to, whoops, you didn't stick very well. Let me try to get him on there better. There, so now we have two eyes, eyeballs, but we need some pupils. So I'm just gonna take a pen and I'm gonna draw in some eyes, some pupils. So now your basic monster is all done but you can decorate him however you want. You can put horns on him like I put on my other one. Um, let me think. I think I want to give him a big pink tongue. So I'm just going to cut a big piece like this. And what about if I stick it in there? Will it look like he has a tongue? Let me try that. So I just need to put a little bit of glue on the top. And I'm going to glue his tongue so it looks like it's kind of sticking out underneath his teeth. There you go. So now he's got a tongue. And you just need to wait for the glue to dry, and then you can use your bookmark in your book. Now, if you don't have paper at home, I just want to show you, or after you, if you want to make more than one of these, these are pieces of paper I just cut out of a magazine that I had at home. So I just measured out with my ruler and drew a six by inch square and cut them out. And then you can fold more monsters. And it's the same thing with the mouth. It's a two and a half inch square. You can cut that out and make more mouths out of paper. It doesn't matter, you could use a brown paper bag. Um, I thought I could make one out of this calendar. It has really pretty pictures on it. So I could use that to make my monster out of too. So whatever you want, but have fun and uh, send me a picture of your monster, okay? 
this month we're all about wild things. You might be starting to feel a little wild yourself. So in the Younger Children's Packet, you get a copy of one of my favorite books, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Now, while I read the book, I'm going to talk about some of the things that parents can do while you read to help your child understand what's going on. Where the Wild Things Are, Stories and Pictures by Maurice Sendak. Now, do you think those are wild things? Have you ever seen a wild thing that looked like that? They look a little scary, don't they? And I think that must be Max. He's the little boy in the story. The night that Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another, now, what kind of mischief is Max making? That's the kind of question you can ask. It looks like he's building a fort in his room, but look, he's putting a nail into the wall. And now he's chasing his little dog with a fork. That Max. Well, his mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. And so he was sent to bed without eating anything. How does Max look in the picture? Does he look happy? I don't think so. I think he looks mad, don't you? That night in Max's room, a forest grew. Have you ever seen trees growing in a forest? And grew, look at all those trees. Let's count the trees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees already. And how does Max look? Does Max look happy? Does he think it's funny? I think he's laughing or giggling to see those trees growing into his, in his room. And those trees grew and grew until the ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. So what happened to the walls? They disappeared, didn't they? And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. And he sailed off through night and day. And can you see? The name on the boat is M-A-X. That's how you spell Max. And in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars. So this is when we all roar, right? Roar! And they gnash their terrible teeth. Let's see your teeth. Gnash your teeth. And roll their terrible eyes and show their terrible claws. Can you show me your claws? Till Max said, be still. And tame them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all and made him king of all wild things. How can you tell that Max is king? Does Max have a crown? And in his arm, he's holding a scepter, which is a king uses to show his power. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. So let's see, there's no words for the rumpus, so we have to make up the words as we go along. So what are those wild things doing? It looks to me like they're howling at the moon and jumping and rumpusing around. And what are they doing in this picture? Are they swinging in the trees? swinging from branch to branch. I'm a little surprised that those big, heavy, wild things can, can stay on those branches, that the branches don't break. And then a huge wild thing parade. 
Honoring who? Who would they honor? Would they honor Max, the king of all wild things? Now stop, said Max, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. Now, who else got sent off to bed without their supper? Do you remember? It was Max, wasn't it? And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around, from far away, across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of, the wild, of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars. Can you roar again? Rawr! And gnash their terrible teeth. Nah! And roll their terrible eyes. And show their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. Oops. Having trouble turning the pages. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day and into the night of his very own room where his supper was still waiting for him. And I hope you enjoy reading Where the Wild Things Are. So let's have one more wild thing roar, okay? Go, Rawr! We also have a cootie catcher for you to make and a little where the wild things are game that you can play with it. So let me show you. This is what the cootie catcher looks like when it's all done. You can open and close it and I'll explain you how to play the game after we make another one. So this is the sheet you have printed for the cootie catcher. The first thing you need to do is cut it out, so you'll need a pair of scissors, cut it out all around the edge, and when you're done, you'll have a square. Now, you really need to have already read Where the Wild Things before you play this game, because part of the way the game works is that you have to answer questions about what happens in the book. So there we go. I have my square all cut out. And now the first thing I do is turn it face down, so the printing's down, and fold it in half so it goes from being a square to a rectangle like that. And then and make your creases really good and sharp. And then open it up and turn it the other way and fold it the other direction into another rectangle. So you've made two, you folded two rectangles and so in the center of your paper you have a cross. And all these instructions are on the sheet that we gave you. So the next thing that you do is lay your paper down flat with the printed side down and fold each of the corners into the center so you can see the little drawing like of the of the wild thing. So you go all the way around and fold each of them in to the middle like that and again make your folds nice and sharp so you can go around and push them down again. Now take your cootie catcher and lay it face down again so you can't see the pictures anymore. And take the corners and fold them in, each corner into the center again. And when you do that, you'll now see the numbers. So go all the way around and fold all of the corners in to see the numbers. And you're almost done making your cootie catcher, but this is kind of the tricky part. 
So what I would do is I would fold it in half into a rectangle. And then you can see that the little pieces with the pictures on them are loose. So slip your fingers between, carefully slip your fingers in between the pictures and the rest of the paper on both sides. So get them way in there. And then this is like how the cootie catcher happens. Push them in to close them up. So you push, push it in so that you have all of your, your little figures meeting in the middle. That's really the only tricky part of this. So just take your time and maybe a grown up can help you do it. So now with, your, with the cootie catcher, you have a little game board to play the Where of the Wild Things game. And then you can cut out these little pieces that are gonna be like the little characters. So we have four characters on the cootie catcher. We have Carol, Max, Ira, and Judith. So the first player picks one of the characters. I'm gonna be Max because I like Max the best. And so just like with a cootie catcher, then somebody else does this for you. The person next to you does this. They open and close while they spell Max. So you go M and close it, A and close it, X. Now they tell you to pick a number. So my number choices are one, two, five, or six. And the person's going to close open and close it the same number of times. So I'm gonna do five. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. Now I have to pick a number again, and I'm gonna open it, they're gonna open it up, and I have to answer the question. Now I'm gonna take number two. So let's see what the question is under number two. So we open it up, and the question is, why did Max get sent to bed? And if I answer that right, I get to move one space. Hmm, Max got sent to bed because he was being naughty. He made a mess in his room and he chased after the dog and he, and he was not nice to his mother. I hope that's a good enough answer. So then this is where we start. So I'm right here, so I would get to move one space to that space. And so you take turns and everybody moves around the board using the cootie catcher and answering the questions and then every, until everybody gets to where the wild rumpus is. And that's how you use the cootie catcher for where the wild things are. In your letter, in your packet, there are some other activities that you can do that relate to where the wild things are. One is doing what Max did when he said, be still and tame them with a magic trick. And his trick was staring into the wild thing's eyes without blinking. So you can do that with somebody else. If you get someone in your house and you both see, stare into their eyes and see who can stare the longest without Linking, See how long you can go for. Then another one is that you can have a wild rumpus like they did. Now I'm not going to rumpus around, but you can put on some music. You can dance and stomp and yell and wave your arms in the air and have some wild things kind of fun. Then Shanti made a word game sheet for you so you can use some of the words in where the wild things are and think of new words and look for words and do a number of different things and this is for grown-ups to do along with the children so you both can do it together so i hope that you enjoy those and then the other things that i have on the list are uh, there's a video of the book where the wild things are that you can watch i have the youtube link for that and also a YouTube link for a puppet show of where the wild things are, where you can have your stuffed wild things. I have a few wild things here. Here's Max and some of my wild things, and you can watch the wild things puppets. And that'll be a lot of fun. 
And then also I mentioned the National Geographic Kids website and the awesome animals to see some real life monsters. We also recorded a Wild Things story time. It's about 20 minutes long where I, I did several different books and we did some songs and finger plays and the, you'll find the link to the story time also in your packet and we'll send it to you in a PDF on your phone through a text so that you can also just um, directly go to the story time. So I hope you have a great month being wild and we'll be in touch again in a few weeks and we'll, I think for June, we're gonna send you some art projects to do. So I hope you'll look forward to that. Bye-bye.